Welcome to the show, my sweet, sweet siblings. This is the Hippie Report. My name is Andy. I'm the host of the show. I'm also the only motherfucker on the show because, you know, this is a, this is a quarantine show. Today on the show, there's no real news. Um, except, of course, uh, my fucking awesome jacket, which I'm, I've been lent by one of my most sacred lovers, gave me this beautiful coat to, uh, to wear for you today, because they're so wonderful. Oh, hippie report back in business. Um, this show today not brought to you by, uh, cool, buttery glasses of Chardonnay. No, 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 no. But I've been drinking on it for a minute. Remember last episode? It was episode 50. And uh, I got righteously drunk before we started. Um, uh, I had a lovely lady in my garden. And we were drinking champagne and eating Georgia Boys Barbecue. Not a, not a sponsor of the show, but a wonderful, uh, wonderful local company. Uh, we were having burn-ins and... Yeah, you now all the fucking good shit and that fucking um, that lime slaw. Ooh, it's so good over there. Not a sponsor of the show, of course, but um, an excellent good time. Um, and uh, so I got wicked blazed and shit in the garden, talking with that brilliant, beautiful person, and uh, then needed to, to jump on here and do a show for you. The 50th episode, in which I, I said I was kind of low-key promised I would play songs. Then I drunkenly almost played you a couple songs. And I'm, I'm so glad that, the, that those of us that saw it saw it. Because I couldn't save it to my phone and send it to the TV people. Because my phone ran out of batteries. Because I'm such a brilliant genius. Anyway. Wayne, you like this shit? Most fabulous jacket, maybe, of the show so far? We'll see. I don't know. Remember that awesome uh, flowery velvet jacket that we had uh, just not so long ago? That's a, that a great coat as well. Um, get, get yourself lovers that, that give you pretty things every once in a while. I'll give you a little, little, little 38 regular, you know. Every once in a while, if you can manage it, it's really good. I don't, I don't know how I got so lucky to have the kind of people that I do in my life, but every once in a while a jacket like this floats my way and it's just like, makes me hump the air a little bit. Today I'm going to try and start hacking away on a new painting. And um, we, we shall see if that comes together. Um, I've got a, a portrait this uh, delightful man in the world has, uh, has hired me to do a portrait of his darling young daughter, and, um, and so I'm, I'm hacking away at that portrait today, because that's what you do with a picture of a, like a, 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 a soft, happy, young angel. You just hack away at it until it's beautiful. Um, it's tough because it, the the initial drawing of the person is the hardest part, basically, of the process, for me. The coloration stuff, uh, matching skin tones or hair tones, that's not nearly as problematic uh, for me as just nailing the picture. I don't know if anybody else out there is doing. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You like this jacket? I bet you've seen it before. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are portrait artists out there, but I find, I find it to be very fulfilling to try and do portraits of people. Very artistically challenging. Um, and I don't, I, I, th I have kind of a theory about it, and I hope everybody won't take it so seriously or personally, but when I'm doing a portrait of a man for a man, you know, and let's say this guy is a white dude, uh, beard, and uh, uh, he likes to wear a hat. If I draw a face with a beard and a hat, that guy's gonna go, oh my God, that's me. 
when I'm doing a painting of a woman, it's different. And I think part of that is um, women are so forced to, well, socially pressured to uh, look in the mirror all the time and really look at themselves and make sure they look just so perfect so they can go to the grocery store or whatever. I think there's a certain societal pressure around that that I don't, I, th I know for certain men aren't feeling. And so a man, there's a real good chance he has not studied his face in the same way uh, that a woman might. And all of this stuff, I'm not really talking about um, does, the, does the target have a dick or not. I'm more mean like um, a masculine-minded person versus a feminine-minded person, I suppose. So I don't, I don't mean to generalize too terribly much without realizing that like um, there, there are gender dynamics at play. And I'm not necessarily trying to have that conversation right now. I'm really trying to say when a, cer a certain demographic of society feels like they have to keep an eye on what they look like. And there's this other demographic uh, where they are just kind of bulldozing through their whole experience and wearing gym shorts to dinner and shit. I'm not going to try and say who that part of the portion of the, of the fucking public is, but there's a certain amount of the public that it thinks they can wear uh, gym shorts outside of the gym. <clears throat> I don't approve of that. I don't approve of that. Uh, I think you got to wear pants when you're in the world. That's, that's my personal opinion. Uh, put on some pants. Remember that movie? Um, my sister used to watch this movie called um, uh, Auntie Mame was the character. I can't remember the fucking name of the movie. Maybe that was the name of the movie. But it's an old movie, and uh, my sister used to watch it all the goddamn time. And it's about this older lady and this uh, young boy that she's raising or whatever. And she, at one point gifts him his first pair of long pants because he's like a man now and shit. And for some reason, that's always been floating in the back of my mind like, no, no, when you're a man, you put on pants and shit. Now, when I say man and shit, please don't read in that I fucking am trying to leave people out. I'm just saying like classically in that movie, that's what the conversation was. And the shit I got from it was like, grown man wears pants, not fucking shorts much less fucking basketball shorts uh, or whatever to go pick up a lady for dinner or whatever. Oh, Jeffrey, you know the fucking bo movie I'm talking about? That's awesome. Uh, I thought I was going to be all alone on that. I tried to not explain it too much. I thought I'd just be so desperately alone about it, but I, I'm glad. Auntie Mame, what is the name of the movie? You know? Just a thought. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm not even sure how I got on that topic. I can't imagine why I forget some of the stuff we talk about on this show. Or why sometimes I try to play the guitar and it just sounds like I've never touched the fucking thing. I've been practicing like not playing my guitar basically since quarantine started. Unless it's in the studio or like a little show that I'm doing, I'm not touching my guitar. I'm not writing songs on it. I'm trying to like create some space. Because like I fucking t I play the thing all the time in my normal life, right? I, I probably play the thing, um, you know, four nights a week uh, in public. So I don't know, I'm trying to like create a little bit of longing between us before we jump back to work here. Last episode, as, uh, as I may have mentioned earlier in this episode, I was rip-roaring drunk. And I must say, uh, I regret nothing. Actually, I think it's like good practice to get far out on weed or, uh, you know, something else like alcohol and then get in public and just start talking. I think it's real good because everybody knows that when you're inebriated, you speak your fucking truth. And, fuck, I've been doing that for 52 episodes, and I don't think I've really said anything that terrible offensive yet. There was the time where I said your grandmother was made of angel jizz. 
And I did mean your grandmother. So there's that. But the evidence for angels is relatively scant. Uh, so, you know, why, why be so offended? Anywho, how about a guitar song? Want to hear a guitar song on this thing? I'm going to make up for last time. Um, last time I played a song by one of my all-time heroes. And, oh God, I just fucked it so bad. I fucked that song so bad all the wrong way. And I meant to do it so good. I just, I was such a fucking fool that I couldn't do it. And today I feel slightly less inebriated. What was this said here? Oh, Mr. Cash, you have really won my heart today. There's a musical and there's a subsequent bad musical movie. Both were simply named Mame. Sounds like uh, Mame is what they did to the fucking uh, reputation of that first film. Hmm. That was an easy joke. Yeah, that was an easy one. I don't feel bad about it at all. Uh, how about a song? Um, I want to play you a song by the same artist I covered last week because, or let, fucking yesterday, or whenever the fuck it was, episode 50, whenever that happened. Um, I want to play one of his songs again just in case I get through it. Wouldn't that be great? Just in case I get through it. All right, let me think of it. What song? Oh my God. If I ever plan this show in advance, we will have ruined the show. That's how I feel. I'm gonna do my best here. Yeah, I know. If, I, I know. Okay, I know the perfect song I have to play. Ooh, the mailman just stopped by my house. Maybe he dropped off some more fucking pocket squares. I bought some pocket squares for just about free on the internet, and uh, oh, my excitement level is very high. Don't you love beautiful shit? Don't you like a pretty jacket? Don't you like a motherfucking pretty, you know, cloth in your coat? Don't you wanna look sexy? Don't you? It feels good to, I can tell you. Oh man, I've had a lot of this Chardonnay. It's so buttery. And they're not a fucking sponsor of the show. Not a sponsor of the show. To Grandma's Angel Jizz. Weird show. It's my show. I didn't do any kind of a sound check. I'm not sure if this will sound good, but I'll try and be mindful. I'll try and do it in a way that I think will sound okay on that little microphone. I am a stoned traveler. I got no place in this world to call my own. I am a stoned traveler. I got no place in this world to call my home. But there's a mansion that is mine at the end of that line between them numbers on a stone. God Almighty more than 
is in this world to call my home. But there's a mansion that is mine at the end of that line between them numbers on a stone. Oh, there's a mansion that is mine at the end of that line between them numbers on my gravestone. There, I played one, Roger. God damn it. I fucked that other one up so bad. I feel like that one got through. Uh, that's by a friend of mine, a fucking pen pal, kind of. I'm really trying to coax him into a good friendship. But um, he, he's, 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 he's a genius, and so he's too smart to be my friend. It's like 80 degrees in this house. Um, Roger Allen Wade is his name. Roger Allen Wade. He's one of the finest songwriters that's ever graced this little planet. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Um, let's see here. <coughs> I think that um, there's a real good chance uh, that we could play another song by Roger here. I'm move some shit around and grab this weed. <laughs> ah, get out of the way. Yes. Uh, let me ditch this weed. Oh, no. How, what am I going to put it in? I'll put it in this glass of water. Who needs that? Ditch the ashes in the glass of water. That seems classy. We won't need that. Don't put it in the wine. But do put it in the water. There. There. Make me a fresh bowl real quick, and then... Um, oh my god, do I have the courage to try the same song I fucked so bad? No. But, I do have courage. <laughs> of other kinds. Maybe we play a different song. That other song is my favorite fucking song. Oh no, I'm letting my inner debate get into the show. Happy 420, everybody. Just a minute ago, maybe. Oh, happy 420. It's a happy day. <sighs> you know? Oh my God, I've been smoking so much weed in this pipe. It almost doesn't want to do it, but it will do it! You know? Who's in charge? You know? This is, uh... When your pipe rebels against you, it's like, um... It's a betrayal, you know, it's it's out of order. It's an order! 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 In the fucking pipe. Because, like, your pipe should be your friend, man. And it is subservient to you. You know what I'm saying? That pipe works for you. Aw, Jeff, are you saying you like my haircut? Homie, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Uh, my, uh, my hair lady comes over to the house and I get to like smoke a joint and chatter up when she cuts my shit. And, uh, I, I told her years ago, just give me the vaguely fuckable. That's what this hairstyle is. But this is the shortest she's ever gone. And I just tell her to do whatever she wants. And, uh, then she, she leaves and I go, oh my God, what do I do with this? Well, this seemed pretty short to me, but now it seems okay. I don't know. I put a little product in it. I've never used product really. Have a good one. I hope you have a great day, Jeff. <sighs> when your pipe rebels against you, that's what I was talking about. What's it like? Oh, let's create something. It's, um, when your pipe rebels against you, it's like being Adam in the Garden of Eden, you know? And you're walking around tasked by God in that story. Tasked by God to go around and name the animals. And you walk up to a fucking squirrel and you're like, your name is Squirrel. And the squirrel's like, fuck that shit. I don't, I don't like that. Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? Whose job is it to name the motherfuckers? You, I work for the big God thing, right? In the story. And it's my job to fucking name a bitch. And your bitch ass name, you fucking, your name is Squirrel. Squirrel. 
And the squirrel's like, nah. My, I like Cocker Spaniel. Sounds cool. Here come the neighborhood Cocker Spaniels. Doesn't that sound awesome? That'd be, uh, that's what I want from my people. And, uh, you know, the fucking Adam, of course, probably a white man, if he's going around bossing around everybody telling him about their culture and shit. That's my guess. That's my guess. I'm a little woke, right? I'm one of the cool kids. I hate us. So, it's just like Adam walking around the garden, trying to name some shit, and then feeling like uh, the authority he's got as, like, uh, the name giver. It's all fucked up. That's how I feel when my pipe's clogged. Was that a very roundabout analogy? Yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. Sometimes it seems like I'm just trying to offend everybody, but I'm really just being myself. I make a lot of biblical allusions uh, because uh, that's what I was raised to do. Um, and so I, I still do it even though I'm no longer a, a Christian. I'm still a, 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 a great American. Doesn't that count for anything? Let's try another song. I'm gonna, God damn it, I'm gonna try the song that I fucked up yesterday when I was too drunk. Yesterday? A few days ago? It's been a minute, I know that. Might have been Friday. Might have been Friday. Man, I don't play in the same key though. get that thing. Oh, this is the original key of the song. I think I can sing it. Oh my god, I haven't played this since the last time I played a show, which was months ago at this point. Ooh, hi Taylor, how are you? Yeah, awesome. Irvashi, that's awesome. That's right, man. A little self-hatred uh, is good, because then it gives you permission to hate the other people, you know? Oh, if you loved yourself truly, uh, you'd almost have to love everyone. Wouldn't that be a crime if you just had to love everyone because everyone is you and, like, uh, you have to cut them the same breaks that you'd cut yourself? That fucking sucks. I like it more easy way when you could just hate on motherfuckers. You know? Remember the good old days when, when, when you could just hate people all the time? No, no, no. Turns out they weren't very good days at all because of all the fucking... Hate. Uh, let's see. Gotta just love yourself and love all the people, I guess. It's harder work, and maybe, uh, you know, um, but it's, I think, better for humanity. Might as well, might as well love ourselves, might as well love the other people, because it's the same thing. You know, dare I make another biblical illusion? Uh, there's a part in the Bible. But the guy's like, um, I think everything boils down to kind of two things. Now, the guy says it boils down to love God and love people. But the uh, same guy in a different conversation is saying, like, God is within me and he's within you. So, like, really how the math kind of might work out in that theory is, like, you have to love yourself because there's just a little bit of God in you, whatever that means. And also, you have to love other people because that's nice. And also, turns out, there's a little God in them too, whatever that means. So you have to kind of love them double. That sucks. That math sucks, and it's hard to hear, and it doesn't feel good to say either because it's like a big responsibility. You know, I'm not trying to give you a bunch of homework telling you you gotta go around loving everybody. Wouldn't it be terrible if everybody just loved everybody? Oh, a crime. An evil upon the world. Or would it be the fucking best? Would it, could it be that our disrespect for ourselves and disrespect for each other and disrespect for animals that we want to, like, stack in wet markets or whatever because we don't respect them. Could it be that, like, maybe that is uh, the reason we're getting all fucked up now? Maybe it's a lack of respect. Just a fucking thought. No, I'm not supposed to talk about serious shit. I know that. I know what show we're doing. But also, motherfuckers, what about, like, what about if kindness and respect toward living things could have solved the particular problem we're in now. 
and created us a much better life in the meantime. What if that were true? I don't know, because I'm, I'm just some guitar-playing asshole with a fucking bowl in his hand, but I'm just saying, maybe on the hippie report we should practice a little self-love. And a little bit, and by part of what I mean by self-love just might be like loving other people, because it's the same shit. That includes your fucking dog. It's a hot day, your dog got some water outside. You know what I'm saying? What if we respected all the creatures that way? Maybe like we wouldn't be all fucked up like we are now. I don't give a fuck uh, if people are watching this show. I just gotta speak the shit that's on my mind. I think it'd be real interesting if on a societal level we decided to experiment with kindness. I always feel like I'm on tricky ground when I talk about any of the stuff I just talked about because I feel like sometimes I, I say it sarcastically to try and make the point and I'm afraid motherfuckers will just pull the quote. <laughs> Maybe we should have a section of this show where we just say things that are two sentences long and you say some outlandish thing for the first sentence, and the second sentence completely redeems it and makes complete sense. But you put it out there because it's sort of a temptation for people to misquote you. Now, to even give you an example would be to play the game. But if you said something like, I agree with dot 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 person on one issue, there's one sentence, and Pretty damning, depending on the character. But then if you follow it up with a sentence like, um, I do think that that hairstyle is the best hairstyle they could have had for their shape of skull. Well, that's not really offensive at all, is it? To say that some insane, evil person had a good haircut. That's not, that's not wicked or bad or anything. But you put it out there to like, I don't know, sort of tempt the world to misquote you. It'd be sort of a fun, ballsy game for some public person to play. I think I sort of accidentally play it a lot. All right, I'm gonna try and be brave. I'm gonna play you a song. With a mostly tuned guitar. I'm gonna play you my favorite song by one of my favorite songwriters. This song is probably it's definitely in my top five all-time favorite songs. And I, oh, I fucked it so bad in the last episode. I'm gonna try and redeem myself. I'm gonna play the same song again in this episode. All right, so here it goes. Absolutely, my sweet lover, my heart shall remain here with you. As my soul goes to suffer and discover a beauty and truth. But I must go from you now, they wait for me out there somewhere. But I'll take with me the taste of your kiss. And a lock of your hair It's a hard road I've chosen One best traveled all alone And the hardest miles will be those I call you collect from the twilight zone And the sound of your voice Will only make my longing stronger As I remember how Too long is the time between now and when I'll hold you again.
up someday in a place so far away no one can help me descending into alcohol and alchemy and solitude and poetry I may rest my weary body in a place where the four winds call home but I pray I never darken the gate where love goes when it's gone It's a hard road I've chosen One best traveled all along And the hardest miles be those I call you collect from the twilight zone And the sound of your voice Will only make my longing stronger I remember how I love to touch your skin Too long is the time between now and when I'll hold you again Darling, too long is the time between now and when I'll hold I give myself a B plus, B minus, somewhere in there. I believe you call that a B. That's just fine. It's a good fucking song. Hey, Stephen Phoenix, writer of good songs. Oh no. My drink's gone. My bowl looks smoked as fuck, and I think it might be my second bowl. It's already sort of breaking the rules of the show. And I played a guitar on this episode. What's this show coming to? Is it getting better or is it getting worse? It feels worse. I'm not sure. Oh my God. Tried to smoke another bowl? <sighs> Josie says another bowl. It seems like good advice. Um, I think I will have another bowl. And I'm also probably um, going to need to, like, refill my wine without showing the maker of the wine because they're, of course, not a sponsor of the show. They're not a sponsor of the show! And we wouldn't have them. And we don't even like them. We think, you know, six, you know, six out of ten. Six out of ten. Not bad wine, but on sale, and there's a reason. Oh, he's getting up and he's walking out of frame right here in the middle of the show. What a piece of shit. Who the fuck does a show like this? Nobody does. That's why I'm doing it. Good to see you, everyone. Oh, just a little splash. Splish splash just during the day with the girls. A little bit of the old buttery Chardonnay. Here you go. Mmm. I'll tell you, it really is good. Really is pretty good. That sucks. Uh, anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> sponsor him. That's right, Josie. Sponsor him. See my Venmo? You can kind of sponsor me, folks, if you like. I have a Venmo, and all it's for is for people to send me money. And if, if that sounds like something that moves you, an idea that appeals to you, I'd like to not have as much money in some small increment. Uh, maybe I'll give some to old Mr. Epler there on the old hippie report. He does do such a hard job there, getting high in public. How how does he manage? I know, I know, I know. It's a fucking real, it's a real cross to bear. Uh, but, you know, uh, I just lift with my legs and I bear that motherfucker. Uh, I'm going to load one more bowl here because I have... I have got to get so stoned before I try and paint this painting. I'm trying to draw this great painting of this of this little girl. Her her dad um, commissioned it, and the the painting is like she's dead on to camera, which is the fucking worst. But she's she's slightly looking down and smiling, and she's got her hand kind of like this. And that's a pretty tough drawing for me. She's got a little. Uh, bug in her hand. What is it? A, a, 
a praying mantis. That's what it is. I've never drawn a praying mantis in my life. But I never, I had never drawn a hummingbird in my life. But I recently did one of those. So like, she's got the little fucking bug and she's like looking at it and smiling. And it's the cutest fucking picture ever. But not because it's going to automatically make a great painting. So, uh, old Lando's a little uh, intimidated style by that. <clears throat> so, he's going to have to just get a little, uh, how do you say, uh, stoned uh, before he starts that. Plus, Endo takes a little bit of summoning. You know what I mean? You can't just you can't just put him on like a hat, which would be great. I guess then you could take it right back off like a hat. He does. Urvashi's right, of course. I do need wine and cheese. It's an important part of my life, man, uh, because I love beauty. And and did you know you can eat that shit? Did you know you can eat beauty? It's called wine and cheese, and uh, and it's it's not free. But, you know, it's relatively cheap, you know. I bl I'm, I'm a big believer in the grocery store near me, man. Uh, I'm there every day. It's like my sacred space that I escape to when I'm trying to not be in my office all day. And uh, they have a great cheese selection. Always sort of like weird shit coming through. I love it. Um, but I believe a nice $5 piece of cheese, you know, plus like a nice $10 bottle of wine is like the best night ever. I believe that. I feel really strongly about it. Josie, you and me and Urvashi ought to get together for wine and cheese night. I know we all like food. I know we all like wine and cheese. And I think we should just consider that. That sounds fun. <laughs> Kurt, you like that? You like this jacket? Thank you very much. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's, uh, it's on loan, man. I just think, like, it's a sometimes jacket. But, you know, man, it is beautiful. And I must say, it's more beautiful in person. It's very sparkly. Maybe you can see. Can you see? But uh, I think it's really nice. Well then, wine and cheese night in the Yes Garden soon, sounds like. That seems like an excellent idea. Um, anyway, I probably ought to think about going to work here. Man, I stayed up um, the other night. Um, and, uh, and watched a movie with this person who had never seen the movie before. They never watched it. And it's called Goodfellas. And if you've never seen the movie Goodfellas, you should immediately stop what you're doing and just go see, you know, why Robert De Niro used to be a real good actor. He, you know, I'm not, I, I miss Robert De Niro. And it's like, he's still there. He's still making movies. But I miss him because I feel like Oh my God, can I, can I talk about a movie real quick? I just watched a movie called Joker. I finally saw it. And uh, I'm not, I'm trying not to spoil anything. But uh, it's, it's, I kind of, it's sort of about the Joker from the Batman franchise. But like, boy, I did not really, the more I think about it, the less I like it. Because it was a great movie, great performance uh, by Joaquin. He's the fucking man. But uh, I think like if you just take the Batman stuff out of it, it's a better movie. I think it's a better movie. Because they're a little beholden to the Batman stuff. And they're not making a movie about the Joker. That's not what this is. It didn't feel like it. Even though it's loosely based on some comic books related to the origin of the Joker... Um, the laughing joke specifically that that comic book. It's it to me disappointing. You know, I I I'd like the idea that nobody knows where the Joker's from. I always like that. That's way 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 better. But De Niro's in that movie, and he plays like a. He he plays like a Jay Leno type, okay. 
and uh, that is already disappointing because uh, Jay Leno is the not my favorite late night host. Like compared to the people we have now, maybe I guess is better than some of these guys, but it's just such a fucking drag, and uh, it's a fucking drag fest when uh, De Niro comes on the fucking screen. It's he's in there because. The Joker movie really does seem almost like a spiritual uh, sibling to the movie Taxi Driver. And so De Niro's in the movie. And he plays like a, the this TV host of a, like the late night show. And he's so awful. I know. People are saying he's, it's good. I, I disagree all the time with people about all, most everything. And... Um, I, I think like this, I, I wish that almost anybody else was in that part. Like if maybe put a comedian in that part, be, but they wanted to like literally point back to the movie they were sort of loosely copying um, so that they don't get busted as much for just copying it. I think if they, they it's an homage, you know, then that's more excusable. But I think it's, I don't know, man, I, that movie's disappointing. If they want to do a Joker origin movie, they should go ahead and do the laughing joke. The Laughing Joke is a comic book where the Joker um, shoots Barbara Gordon, who is a Batgirl. He shoots her and paralyzes her with that and kind of tricks Jim Gordon into going insane that way. And his whole goal is to like prove that uh, anyone can go insane from one bad day. And that's, that's the Joker's whole thing in that particular comic book um and uh actually if you want man if you're interested in comic books and you probably should be it's a, it's american mythology you should be interested in it um if you're interested at all in humanity you should probably tune into comic books what's up hand good to see you i'm with you hand i love joaquin i loved him in the joker he's it's it's a beautiful flick i like the stairwell uh symbolism all through the flick and then it culminates with that big dancing scene stairwells are very important in that movie and lens flares are very important in that movie light is very important in that movie without spoiling anything what i, I will say a little more about that movie fuck um that i really like the symbolism in the movie i thought it was a good movie i just think it wasn't about the joker you know it was just about like a mentally handicapped person or mentally deranged person more like um who obviously needs attention and love and care and society's not providing that and they 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 lose their grip and start becoming violent that's it, an interesting thing to talk about and it could have been handled better if they didn't feel so connected to the idea of building him into the joker that's my personal opinion uh, it, that's an interesting topic that needs real serious discussion and deserves to have movies made about, but uh, putting it as a, a movie about this particular comic book character is seemingly, yeah, uh, distasteful even. Um, but the, the light symbolism, if you watch that movie, watch what the light does and realize the context you're in when the light hits you anywhere, on the stage, or in uh, just in scenes coming through windows, they're very purposeful about the quality of light that, that comes in the scene. And every time the character goes, I believe this is true, I've seen the movie one time, but I noticed it was pretty heavy handed. Every time the character goes down some stairs, it's, the, he's basically going into the light becoming himself the Joker and so like he'll make some weird scene or something and he'll go down some stairs and it'll it'll be into a light source and then when he does something outrageous you know toward the climax of the movie and people get injured he is um, it is dark and He's unsure of himself and shit like that. And then in the, it's in a subway and he runs up some stairs at the end of that scene. But it's dark. Okay. 
So like, it re I think represents him sort of becoming himself. And like, everybody knows the famous scene at the kind of the end of the movie where he's in his full regalia and he's doing this, he's literally dancing, going down some stairs, descent into madness, you could see it as, and going down those stairs. And when he's dancing, think of the light in that scene. It's the pinnacle of his character, the, the, his full actualization scene. What's the light doing in that scene? Well, it is broad fucking daylight in that scene. The, the, whole, the whole screen is lit up with light and bright colors and his descent into madness is him stepping into the spotlight. I think that's sort of the symbolism there. And I really like that shit that I'm talking about. I think that's high art. And um, I don't think it's just because I look for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, yeah, okay, that's way earlier in the movie, Hand, yeah. And then, I don't think any of the shit I'm saying is a spoiler. Uh, everybody knows it's about the Joker becoming the Joker. But uh, there's a bathroom scene earlier in the movie where he's, he's, he's kind of dancing around, kind of hinting at becoming himself. And let's think of the lighting in that scene. As I recall, it's a dark scene, and there's maybe like one light source, and it's sort of ugly but it is shining directly on him. So like, I think that that's probably the beginning of the thing I'm talking about. He kind of does this weird dance thing and it's in this mirror and it's, I think, kind of a dark, kind of ugly looking lighting scene. Uh, but then at the end of the movie where he's in his full makeup and big beautiful suit and he's dancing around and shit, broad daylight, you don't even get to see where the light source is coming from because it's like literally directly overhead sunlight. Um, that's like him in, in full spotlight. And then, you know, the rest of the movie happens. But uh, I, I recommend the movie. But don't go in being like, oh, this is, you know, going to be like the origin of my, my one of my favorite all-time American mythology characters. That's not going to be it. And... Um, Boy, I didn't think we'd get into this. This is a long episode. That's okay. It's just going to take forever to download uh, for everyone on the back end of this show. Um, <laughs> um, recommended. I'm a huge Batman fan, and I love that mythology. And if you want to know the, the real story that, uh, that I wish they had done, it's... Uh, it's called the um, the killing joke. What did I say? The laughing joke? The killing joke. I'm thinking of the laughing goat in Boulder. <laughs> what a stoner. The killing joke is the name of the fucking um, Batman story. And if you want to hear if you want to hear that story and really get to experience like a storytelling version of that, uh, you can look up on YouTube. There's this guy named the Comic Storian. Comic Storian, like historian, but for comic books. Okay. And uh, not a sponsor of the fucking show, but like definitely should check it out because the comic story and what he does is like uh, um, dramatically reads these comic book stories and shows you the art and enough to like help you get into the, you know, the vibe of the story and what's happening and stuff. And I'll bet you, I know for a fact, he's got at least one video about the killing joke. And uh, he'll tell you the whole story from beginning to end. I really, really recommend it. Matter of fact, I think that dude lives in Loveland. Maybe I ought to reach out to him. Um, but anyway, there's your homework for the week. Maybe I'll post it on the page. Maybe I'll, I'll post it. This show has a page. Did you know that? It's called At The Hippie Report. The Hippie Report. Here on Facebook. And I post all the videos. So if you miss a, an episode, you can find them all there. Um... You can probably find them here on my feed as well, but it's also going to be mixed in with, like, my life and, you know, fucking art and music and dramatic rants about whatever it is I'm hopped up on today or whatever. Some injustice I'm trying to fucking be pissed about. Uh, if you want just the fucking Hippie Report content, I did create a page for that because I recognize what my page is. <laughs> mm. Anyway, I bless you all, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you don't, I know. I, I hope that you know you're allowed to manufacture it. You're allowed to just, like, start a good day. Good luck.